Welcome to today's edition of Spade TV. Today, a very, very special guest, Mr. Simon Gosworth. George. How you doing, buddy? Brilliant, mate. Brilliant. This, this folks, is a real treat. Simon is one of the premier spay casters globally, <laughs> and today he's going to share some fantastic stuff with you. First, first up is the single spay. Spay casting's oldest, most traditional cast, often looks like the easiest one to learn, probably the hardest. Simon is a master of this craft, and he's going to lay it down for us. Without further ado, buddy, take it away. All right, mate. Thank you, kind sir. Well, as Georgie said, single spay time. Um, when I'm teaching the single spay, I find the simplest way to run through it, if you've never single spay cast before, is actually run through how the single spay originated. Because if you know how it originated, you can kind of conceptualize the cast, rather than just say, hey, this dude picked the rod up here, and he kind of flipped it back there, and he popped it out, and then the line went out. That's one way of doing it, but there's a lot better way of doing it, and that's understanding how the cast works. So the earliest reference I've ever seen about the spay casting, and it was never called spay casting, it wasn't called roll casting, there was no names to it, is in 1872, and this book was describing how to cast a long salmon rod in Scotland. And basically it came in with something like this. You'd bring the rod into your inside shoulder, and with some heave, you'd flop the line across the river, and then you drag the line back, and with an almighty great whack, you smash it across the river. Great. I like the term, smash, heave, whack. But it wasn't quite like that, but you know, poetic license here. The point being, is understanding what all that meant. And what that meant is very simple. The most effective form of a cast, particularly a roll cast, is when you roll down what's called the rail tracks. And you just kind of follow the path that the line's on the water. And if your line starts here, and you want to cast it across to there, basically you have to move your train track, your rail track, to there. And the early descriptions was no more than a floppy old heave, the line went in the right spot, it fell in a miserable heap, because there's no technique, but it was finished off with a cast to straighten it out and get it out to the fish. So really all you're doing, like any spay cast, is you're maneuvering a train track from where it starts to where you want it to go. Single spay, snake, snap, they all are ways of moving the train track. And of course, as people got into casting and they started to look at casting and how casting evolved and how to make casting better, this kind of drag and flop, puddly mess in the water, heave it back here, smash the thing out there. It's not pretty, it's a lot of effort and it's inefficient. But it gives you the concept, I call it the crude spay. That's exactly what I call it these days and I still teach it. I think for people who have a real hard time learning a single spay, the crude spay is a very simple concept of what the single spay is. Bring the rod in here, flop the line across the river, drag it back to form a D loop and then just find the train track and if your train track points down there you just follow the train track out. That's the concept. And then once you've got the concept you can dial it in and, and improve this cast. And the first step really of, of the evolution of the spay was not to pause between that flop and that drag. So it was back in here, out and round and create everything in one move. In the backstroke let the line land and pop it out there. So the next stage was kind of maneuver two strokes into one, just make it a little bit more efficient. And right here I'm using a, a real Scandi head, 520 grain head, so it's quite short. Makes it easy to learn when you have a short head like that rather than with a traditional line. I've got a Sage 1 here, it's the 8136, so it's 13 foot 6 inches long. And again, a lot easier to learn with these longer rods and shorter heads. You can do an awful lot wrong and the cast goes out and you feel quite happy as it. Uh, and it gets a little more difficult as you shorten up the rods and you lengthen up the head. So this is a good outfit to start learning something like the single spay with. So once again, kind of the old, more traditional ghillie style that come in, up, round, pull back, make a forward stroke. And of course, you know what the next stage is going to be? We're not going to pause so long back here. And so the next stage will be the same stroke, up, round, back, and forward. And it really, it was that that was the first evolution of what would be classed modern spay these days, where the line keeps maneuvering, uh, moving and you're keeping the inertia in the fly line and the flex in the rod. When you stop 
moving, the line inertia dies, the rod that's flexed straightens up, so you lose all the benefits and assets of that. These were just early ways of casting. Now, people start to get a little bit more excited about it. So again, more what I call the ghillie style was in, up, over, round, pull back, shoot it out. And the single spay is part of a family of casts called the airborne anchors, which means the line's gonna go through the air, through the whole D-loop stroke, until you're in the key position, and then when you're in a key position, the line will land, and then as it lands, you make a forward stroke. As, the biggest word in spay casting, especially these airborne group casts, as the line lands, not after. A nuance, but very, very important. And just the physics of spay casting mean that this amount of line that's lying on the water is sticky, stuck in the surface film is drag, and with certain casts, that is bad. The more line is lying on the water, the more line's gripped by the surface film. The surface film holds a line in the water and kind of sucks out the energy of the cast. So those early spay casts like this, where I stopped and dragged back, and the line's stuck here, the inertia's gone, the rod is straight, I really have to hit it pretty hard to make my cast go out. We don't want that. That's not pretty. That's not spay ambassador stuff. You should be a spay ambassador making a spay cast that everybody watching wants to do. That's your goal when you're spay casting. And that becomes when you get fluid and effortless and let the rod do the work. So gone are those pauses, up and round, pull back, there's a splash, there's the go. I don't let a lot of lines sit on the water. Woof, woof, woof. So really that's, if you like, the evolution step by step of the single spay. Um, up to the modern space stuff, that's that ghillie style, and ghillie still these days, and there's nothing wrong with this technique at all. Still we'll talk about these big figure eight movements, up and round and over here. And if you're doing a cast like the double spay and you're doing a right-handed double spay, it'll be round and round and big figure of eight. So your rod's doing these big sweepy figure of eights. They work, they load the rod, but the least effective direction of rod load is up and down. So your rod doesn't flex with up and down movements. The only reason you ever move your rod up or down is to steer a line into a certain position. The most effective loading moves are flat. You can see from this rod here, see how I move flat? I really bend that rod because I'm bending against tension. So when you go up and down, so I have the same tension, the rod doesn't bend. So the early spays were, were limited in ability because they have so much up and down with these figure eight moves, it takes out a lot of the tension and load. And as rods develop and they become lighter and faster and have stronger middle sections and faster tip sections, now the cast can develop into something a lot more dynamic, a lot more line speed, a lot more suited to rods like this one. And the casting styles evolved yet again. So I would say now the simplest single spay to learn, and, and again, teaching a lot of people spay casting over the years, I've found this is one of the most successful and easiest ways to learn. I call it the alpine spay. It's just a terminology. There's no actual cast. It's just a way of thinking about the cast. And it looks something like this. Imagine you're in Switzerland. On a skiing trip and you're sitting in some cafe there and drinking some glue wine or coffee, hot chocolate, whatever it is. Look at this beautiful vista of mountains out here. And you see some guy in a bright red jacket. And you point to your buddy there. Look at that dude, look. He's at the bottom of the mountain. And you watch the guy and he's climbing the, the precipice face of the mountain. And you watch him climb straight up the mountain to the summit. And it's a vertical face. And then he gets to the summit and he skis down the mountain, levels out in the valley, and his inertia and momentum sweeps him up to the top of the mountain behind. Okay, that's kind of a, a good way of getting a really simple path of this spay. So as a spay cast, I'm gonna do something like this. I'm gonna point my rod angled across the river as a starting point. It's the only spay I ever use and teach that doesn't start with a rod pointing down river. I point it across. And then I'm gonna do this clean high lift to a vertical spot, almost to about 11 o'clock, and then sweep down with a, an angled dip, leveling out before coming up to the key position. And then this guy you're watching on the mountain is crazy. He jumps from the top of that mountain 
to the top of that mountain. So he goes like this, you see, dude, check this man out, look what he's doing. And he climbs the precipice and he skis down up there and he leaps to the top of that mountain. Pictures. Pictures are so important to understanding the moves. If you just get a rod in your hand and you're going to try and cast, believe me, most people are not going to get it right to start off with. But if you have a picture that you can kind of trace and follow like that, it becomes a lot easier to learn. And the analogies are quite similar in terms of speed of casting as they are in the path of the stroke with this guy on the mountain. Because there's no way this guy on the mountain is going to climb up the mountain faster than he's going to ski down, right? And there's no way if he's going to jump from the top of this mountain to that, he's going to do it without some kind of momentum. So a single space stroke is going to look something like this. I'm pointing at the dude at the bottom, climb, ski down with speed, up, jump to the top. And that's a single spay. So I say it's kind of a style of learning rather than a physical thing, the alpine spay. But if you remember the shapes, and do remember that this guy's climbing a rock face, straight. He's not, cli he's not climbing up a mountain. And a lot of people, when they start the single spays, they are going to drift the rod across as they lift. And when they start the dip, well, the rod's already halfway through the motion, the direction of the cast, which is bad. So I point about 40 degrees across the river. I climb, I'm still pointing about 40 degrees across the river. I haven't swung left or right. Point, lift, swoop down up to the mountain top behind, jump across. So that's just a nice, simple way of mastering a single spay. You have to have a visual. You've got to be able to see the line splash on the water. And that's why they're going down with a rod tip. The downward part of the, the skiing angles the anchor to where you want to go. So if I go down kind of at this angle, I'm going to face the camera like here. If I go down at this angle, my anchor is going to be about here. If I go down at this angle, my anchor is going to be somewhere over there. So the, the angle that you ski down influences where your anchor lands. So I'll show you. If I don't go down, let's say I'm a complete beginner skier. Green slope, knobbly knees shaking, oh, bunny run. And you go down really flat. Well, if you go flat and you kind of extend that flat, it's going to touch the water somewhere up here. So if you get too flat a stroke, your anchor is miles upriver. That's not the right place for it to be. It'll angle a long, long way away. That's a bad casting stroke. And likewise, if I come down too steep, come down some double black diamond run, like almost death level, the line lands in front of you and you're going to just end up tangling in front because your line hadn't come up the right spot. So depending on your rod length, the depth of wading, your line length and all those ratios, there's a certain angle. You just have to play around. What you're trying to do is you're trying to land the line somewhere about 45 degrees from your upstream side and somewhere within a rod length. And I talk about, you know, in most of my spade classes, I talk about the, the square, the box. And the box is a very simple analogy. You draw a square with your feet in one corner. So I point my rod in front of me, splash. I draw a line from the splash to my foot, 90 degrees to that, splash. Draw a line from that splash to here, and I complete the square. So I have a square here, and I can also have a square on my left side. So you have these squares, these images of squares. The squares are the perfect anchor point position when you make a forward stroke. So the closer you can land your line tip to the square, the more efficient your cast will be. So here's a couple of bad single spays and I'll just continue and if you can kind of imagine my square, look where this is, that's way above the square. Line didn't just went at no energy, cast kind of fail in a heap, land in the wrong spot. Now this one's gonna be even dangerous because I don't even get up to the square. If I land in front of my body below the square, whoa, okay, hang on, not good. So you have this image, this square, that you're trying to land the line in the box. And if you get the right lift and the right angle of drop, the line tip lands right there in the square, it's set up right. So that's kind of your visualization. You have the square that you're trying to land your line in, da di da and that's a good spay casting level for certainly for most people who are getting into the single spay and wanting to understand how to do this cast. 
because it's an airborne cast, it's not a great cast for short, heavy lines. If you fish Skagit lines, big flies, heavy sink tips. Because the, the energy of this cast with all these rotational moves is in the air, these lines need water to grip them. So generally, this is not a, considered a Skagit type of line cast. Of course it can be done. But generally speaking, your Skagit casts are going to be the ones that stay on the water where the line tip grips and held by the water and the sink tip's held by the water, your fly's held by the water, so as you come round, the water holds it, keeps it tight. Of course you can do these single spay with Skagit lines. I'm just giving you kind of the rules of thumb. So it's best to learn with Scandi type lines, with traditional type lines. So remember the Alpine spay, make sure the line's on the dangle. I'm pointing, climbing the mountain slow and high, dip down up to the mountain top, jump across. Trying always to land it somewhere in that square. So that's the single spay in a nutshell through its evolution. Hopefully it made some kind of sense to you. Hopefully you'll give it a shot. Uh, start with the crude spay, go onto the ghillie star spay or just go onto this alpine star spay. And you know, single spay is not a hard cast. It is a hard one to learn. But once you get it, it's an extraordinarily powerful, very useful cast and totally efficient. So thanks for watching Spay TV.